So hey, what do you guys want to do today? So in the last video, we did a lot more stripping and priming and all of that. Got half the hood done. Got the uh, all the primer done on the uh, the trunk lid. It's looking good, nice and straight, ready to block. Uh, but like I mentioned in that video, I do need to get down to the paint shop and get some more supplies. We're out of primer. I'm out of sandpaper. Uh, we're not we're not looking good. So we're gonna have to get out there and get that straightened out. But before I do all of that, I thought maybe we'd jump back over on this truck since we did that one on the last video. I thought maybe we'd do that this one on this video. And then maybe on the next video, we'll come back and do this one. And we'll just keep going like that until they're done. Um, it's kind of a New Year's resolution I got. I'm just like the rest of you. I made one too. Uh, I want to get some, some projects done and out of here. And I want to um, roll in some of my own personal projects. And I introduced those to the channel and reintroduce one of them to the channel. I know some of you guys want that Dotson back in here, and we're going to do that. But before I do that, i got to get these done. I thought maybe we'd just start out by getting this thing down on the ground. On the last video I did of this one, you know, we buttoned up everything underneath it. Uh, drive line, shifter, torque converter bolts, you know, got the transmission. Everything's good to go on it. Hell, I even found some time to sort out some wiring issues. Not completely done in that area yet. I got to do some more work over on this side now. I thought maybe we'd just start by getting it down on the ground. A little easier to work on that way since we're done underneath it anyway. So let's just get it down off the ramps. So this is what I'm up against today, something I'd like to get sorted. Uh, this has an internally regulated alternator, okay? Originally it came with an externally, an external regulator, and they're mounted over here. That's what this box is up inside of here. Somebody's already converted it. The plug has been unplugged, snipped off, the wires rerouted the way I hope, I hope the way they're supposed to go that remains to be determined basically i'm supposed to have a blue and white wire that runs up to this alternator a blue wire and a white wire and i don't see them anywhere i'm going to dig into this this harness and see if i can find them fun stuff gotta love wiring but you know there's not a plug run into that alternator nowhere so i don't know what's going on there but we'll figure it out Famous last words, right? We'll figure it out. Who knows, man, dealing with wiring. For anybody that doesn't know, uh, wiring's not my most favorite thing, and it's not my strong suit. But I do know enough just to kind of get by. Now, common stuff here, just old crispy electrical tape. You know, it's old, probably put on here years ago. So we'll get all of that off. We may have to redo some of our connections. Some of you guys got onto me on the last video because I didn't solder my wires and stuff. But, man, I don't know if it's a good idea to go soldering all this to together right off the bat because I'm not even sure if it's 100% right. You know, I'm not, I'm not clear on that just yet. I like to make sure everything works. And I don't know, maybe then we can go back and, and uh, do some soldering or whatever. But definitely not yet um i gotta make sure that the battery charges after everything's all hooked up i gotta make sure i got the the right thing going down to the starter so that it cranks uh i mean i'm pretty sure it's right but you know how that stuff goes so anyway this is the red wire that runs over to the back of the alternator as well i know that without a doubt because i labeled it you can see there back of alternator so that one we're we're gonna redo it too because I don't know what's happening here, but we got lots of stuff uh, taped together, and I think maybe we should just go ahead and get in there right now as well. So I'm in here, I'm taping this wire, and I can see a spot here. Let's get my light. I mean, look at that. That's burnt and melted completely under that tape. So yeah, this this all needs to get replaced anyway. So let's just get on that. Get that out of the way. I mean, this wire is melted all the way inside of here. It's almost like it got taped 
over. I mean, there's, I don't see how all of that, sorry, I don't see how all that got melted without melting the tape. So it's almost like somebody taped over it. I don't know. Oh, look at there. Found a plug of some sort. Look at that. I wonder what that goes to. Let's see what else we could find. I feel like I'm on a treasure hunt here. Oh, more of that melted wire. Well, I'll tell you what, that thing melted quite a distance there, over a foot so far, just melted wire. Still not sure what that's about. All right, so this is what we came up with under that tape. It's just a whole bunch of melted wire and this plug that doesn't seem to go into any, anything. I don't know. I'm getting here cut open this this wire loom. We had this open on the last video, but we basically started here and went this way and got all this nice and straightened out. But I need to go from here back, kind of trace back some of these wires and see if we can't figure out which one of these is supposed to go to the alternator. Because I already know which one goes to the uh, distributor. We've got that one right here. There's some plugs into the distributor. Boy, this old tape's so crunchy. So I don't know, we may have to go all the way back to the ignition, the ignition switch, to figure all this out and just basically start over, I don't know. Like I said, man, this isn't really, this isn't my thing, but I think if I do enough research, I ought to be able to get this sorted out. I guess we'll find out. Okay, so at this point, get this out of here. At this point, everything has been dug out of the cowling. We have all the wires out here in our hands. All right, so this is kind of interesting. I just pulled this, this is one of the red wires. I just pulled this out of the firewall. Uh, the end of it's just taped up. And this one, this is a hot wire. This runs all the way around, straight over that fender and to the hot side of the battery. So, I don't know why they've got it pulled out and they've got it completely covered with tape. Look, they blocked it off for some reason. I did just happen to notice this. This is over in this corner again. Uh, the, the red wire that runs over to the alternator, the one that's all melted up, right next to it is another red wire. And it's been snipped off. Let's look over here some of my stash. We've got all kinds of wires. Got a big old wiring harness here. I bet there's some wires in there we could probably dig out. It's a pretty good sized wiring harness there. Uh, I think we could probably rob a lot of wires out of it. We'll see. We'll rob whatever we can out of this harness and whatever we, you know, we can't get out of this, we'll go back out to the parts truck and rob some more wires off of it. Some of you guys are asking me, you know, what's the story on this truck and what do I plan on doing with it? It actually belongs to a buddy of mine and he did a favor for me and then this is the favor that I'm doing for him. Kind of a barter system type deal. That's how we country folks do it around here. The cool thing was is he dropped a bulldozer off at my house for like a month. A month he left a bulldozer at my house and told me to do whatever I want to with it. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I had a blast with that thing. As you could imagine, I was digging ponds, plowing driveways, knocking trees down, making race tracks for the dirt bikes, you name it, man. Had a lot of fun, got a lot of work done too. There ain't nothing more fun than digging a pond with a bulldozer, I promise you. That's why I wanna take my time and make sure I get all this right. All right, so I got my wire snips. I've got my list. Let's head out to the yard and let's get us some wires. Let's rob these wires off this old truck, get them back in the shop, get them routed where they need to go and all that. And then we'll take us a little walk back there to the back. See what's going on back there. See if we got some water in that pond. That'd be cool. Shouldn't have any problem finding our blue wire. I mean, look at that. I need 10 feet of blue wire. And then we got a big old long blue wire there. So we'll take that for sure. We need all the blue wire we can get. Trace it all the way back over here somewhere.
Alright, we went all the way back to the block on that, so that's all we're going to get out of that one. Hopefully it's enough. I think it is. So I found this on YouTube. A uh, really detailed video explaining the GM two-wire charging system. Very informative video. Uh, you'll want to go check it out if you have any doubts on your charging system. The name of the channel was Chris Craft. I will leave a link in the description for you if you guys want to go check him out. He's got a lot of really good videos, very informative videos. And man, he puts it out there very detailed. So not only does he make these detailed drawings uh, st stating the, the wire gauge, uh, the color of the wires, all the accessories, everything from the alternator, starter solenoid battery, key switch, everything. He even lays the stuff out on a workbench and shows you exactly how everything is all wired together and exactly how it works. Anyway, you know, really cool channel. Link in the description. Go check it out. Well, I'll tell you what, that really was helpful in figuring all of this stuff out. No doubt about it. Shows here on the diagram that it's a purple wire that runs from the S side down on the starter solenoid up to the uh, S side on the back of the uh, key switch. Okay, so let's look here and you'll see this. Here's my purple wire. It's running down to the S side on the starter solenoid. Okay, and now it runs over into the firewall here. See, here it is here. Let's see where it goes. It's supposed to go to the switch. Okay, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find out if it does that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the switch out. Look on the back side and make sure the wires are right. We do have a purple wire on the back side of the key switch. So I think that one's good. Let's get to uh, checking all the other ones. That's the red wire, 10 gauge wire that's supposed to come off the back of the uh, alternator. It hooks to this, the little post on the back side. Most of you guys are familiar with this. That's where it hooks to. And it's supposed to go over to this junction block right here. Here's our junction block on the fender. Now that's supposed to go over there. And for some reason, it's coming from over here where that voltage regulator was located, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of that because that ain't right. And that's the wire that was melted. Remember, I mean, look how this thing is melted all burnt to a crisp. So, that's obviously wrong. And that's where one of our red wires that we just scored from the parts truck is gonna go. I'm gonna try to do this as cleanly as possible. Obviously you could just jump straight from there over to here, you know, three feet. But we're gonna go back this way, you know, up the fire. We're gonna tuck our wires in just like we've been doing and run them around over here to the junction block, you know, that block there, the junction block. Try to keep it as nice and neat as possible. We're on a roll so far. This is so easy to understand. Anybody could do it. Um, these two wires that come out of the alternator, that's the plug, okay? Uh, one of these wires is going to run back, go into the firewall, and it's going to go to the dummy light, okay? And then you're going to have a brown wire coming out of your dummy light and going back over to the ignition. And... That's pretty self-explanatory, pretty easy. The number two wire, that's the next part of the plug. According to this, the number two wire is gonna run over to the junction block. So it's gonna come over here. So again, we'll be running it back over there around and over to here. Uh, that'll be your white wire. Usually that's a white wire. The number one, the other side of the plug, normally that's a blue wire. There we go. Hopefully this is the right length. This is the longest red wire that I could find. And like I said, I mean, if it turns out we got to use a different color, so be it. Not the end of the world. I was just hoping to keep them all the right color. That's all. Like we said before, that wire is going to kind of come up here, run across here, and come over to the to the junction block. Hopefully it's, it's long enough. Time will tell. I'm not going to... Uh, 
put it all in the wire looms just yet. I want to get everything ran first, get all my little connectors, everything like that. And then we'll start putting it back into the wire loom like we did on the last video. I had to open this loom back up because I do want to put that inside of there with the rest of it. So anyway, moving right along, let's go on to the next wire. So I've been going through my checklist here. Just going through and checking off all the wires that are in place. All right. Obviously, our battery cable was in place, so we could check that off. Uh, the wire, the red 10 gauge wire that goes from the battery terminal, the, the positive side, over to the junction block, we could cross it off too. We've got it in place. It's right here. You can see where it hooks. This is all temporary for now. I'm going to wire this in after it's all in place, but you can see it runs over here to the positive side of the battery. And it's going to run over here to the junction block. So that one's in place. We can check it off. Our alternator wire, the one that comes off the back, back of the alternator, the 10 gauge red wire, is going to come off the back of the alternator and run over to this junction block. That was this red one here. We've got it in place, kind of. This is actually going to run up here and into this wire loom and then back around over here into the junction block. And you can see here it is in place as well. So I could cross it off the list. What else was there? Okay, the purple wire that runs from the S side on the starter solenoid up to the S side on the uh, key switch itself. Okay, that is this purple wire here that runs down to the starter. That wire was actually correct. So we didn't have to do anything to it. We lucked out on that one. So. We could cross it off the list as well. What does that leave us with? That basically leaves, leaves us with these, these two wires that come out of the alternator. Uh, that's your blue wire and your white wire. We talked about that a minute ago, I think. I'm gonna get that wire in place next. I think all it is, all I need is the blue wire that runs inside. So let's get on that one. So now that that wire is in place, you know, like I said, we still got to put a plug and everything in. We still got a white wire that needs to come over to the junction block. And you can jump this wire over to this wire because this wire is already run into the junction block. But I think I, I just want to keep it factory, you know, the same way it's supposed to be from the factory. So we're going to run the... the this wire around over here along with this wire that's already heading in the same direction and we're going to go ahead and uh, hook that to the junction block just like factory you know i mean you could jump it across there a lot of guys do that i've done it too but um, I, like i said i want to do it like the factory so i am going to go ahead and run that over there well dang i can't find any white wire anywhere so we're just going to go with a with a green one <laughs> how about that but it's got a white stripe on it so close enough right and it's long enough, that's always a plus. All right, so we could cross these off the list now. That's my blue wire, it's out of there. We already know the brown wire was already there, so I guess we could technically cross that off the list too. Our number two wire coming out of the alternator going over to the junction block. That's our green wire we just added. Uh, we could cross that off the list now. I think we got it all, everything is in place. Uh, all I gotta do now is actually attach them to the things that are supposed to be attached to. And then we could go through and kind of clean up some of this with some wire looms and whatnot. I've already picked me up a brand new pack of connectors, so it should have everything we need to take care of that, get everything tidied up real nice. Something else we'll do is we'll get in here and remove this old wire that used to go to the alternator that we don't need anymore. We'll just get in here, snip that right out of there. It was all, all melted and everything else anyway, so we'll get rid of that. There was a couple of other wires that came out of here that some people have... Uh, kind of wired in that I have no idea what they go to. They don't look like they go to anything anymore. In fact, they just had the ends of them taped off. Uh, this one I, I pulled out of the, out of the uh, firewall. It was going inside to something. I don't know. They just had it went, it just went under the carpet, but you can see here where it's been spliced in. 
right there to the factory harness. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that. I don't know what they were running off of that, but it's gone. We're getting, we're going to cut that off of there. See if we can't cover that up with some heat shrink or something. I don't know. We can't leave it bare. I know that. Uh, this wire here ran under the dash and wasn't plugged into anything either. And it came off of this, this right here, which is just the pump for the uh, windshield washer bottle. Uh, we'll put that back in and, and I guess it just needs to be wired up to a hot source somewhere. So that ought to be easy. No problem with that. So we're getting it figured out. No doubt. Uh, it looks like a mess right now, but we'll get it all tidied up and looking good. I promise you that. Yeah, when I first got this place, you couldn't even walk back here. It was just solid brush everywhere. I mean, no trails, no roads, no nothing. There's some more of our downed branches. That's a shame too. That's a cool tree. Wait, it kind of kind of looks spooky right now, but wait, it kind of comes over the trail there. But look at that big old branch came off of there, and it's all laying down here now. Good firewood though. As you can see, some of the roads kind of come through here and bounced around a little bit and plowed some of this stuff down and opened it up a little bit. I'll tell you what, I don't know if you guys ever spent time on a bulldozer, but it's like the best time of your life. That was a blast. Uh, he dropped that thing off out of here for like a month and I just, I went to town with it out here while I was knocking trees down and digging ponds and all kinds of stuff. It was fun. kind of see here opened up some big areas even came up in here into the trees kind of carved me out some some roads big enough to actually drive a pickup truck through more down branches there we'll have to clean up but that's pretty cool you could drive around back here i'll need to come through and kind of trim up some things here and there but that's easy you can do that with saws and chainsaws or whatever but pretty cool you can get up into these little areas here now all these tall trees all around what a cool little camping spot i mean how cool would it be just to kind of pull up in here with some atvs or little pickup trucks or what have you and just put you up a tent campfire spend the night out here man this is really cool but yeah i cleaned all this up in here this was solid trees you couldn't get through here at all you couldn't walk through here or anything Some of you guys are wanting a, a yard tour. I've done a yard tour before, but never way back here. Thought maybe I'd show you guys some of the property. Some of you guys were asking. You can see how thick this is over in this area. See this? I mean, you get into these areas and you can't even, you can't walk through none of this. It's just too, I mean, everywhere you look, it's just too thick. Nothing but brush, trees way too close together. But then you get out here and it opens up a little bit. Still kept a lot of my trees though. I love my trees. That's the whole reason I moved out here. So you still got all your good, you know, your big trees. There's another spooky one there. Look at that. Still got all your big trees. Just everything's kind of spread out now so that you can actually drive through here. And it's even more opened up when you don't have all these down tree limbs. This is what I was talking about the other day. I mean, they're everywhere. But tons of firewood. These big old trees. These are so good in the summertime. You got these big areas back here. You could just pull up with your ATV or your little pickup truck. and Nice and shady. Make you a little campfire. We do this all the time. It's fun. But yeah, you get over here, you know, you look over here, real dense, way too thick. Then you come off out here and we're kind of opened up trees here and there. And you come on back here. This goes 
quite a ways back. Uh, half, these, these are a half a mile deep. So we got plenty of room to, to mess around. I'll show you something over here. This is back when we used to do paintball wars. You got a little paintball shack over here, a little hideout. <laughs> Good times. Back when we did our paintball. This is a ramp. I mean, look how high this thing goes. It's got a lot of grass growing on it right now. But man, you come flying through here on a four-wheeler, you hit that ramp, you'll catch some air. Let me trim up the trees again. Come off down this little road. Take you back in here. I dug me another little pond back off back in the very back. I wonder if it has any water in it yet. This was so fun though. We used to have, uh, we used to play hide and go seek on four wheelers. We got all these trails. God, more tree branches blocking all my trails. But you come flying through here on a four wheeler in the middle of the night when there's a full moon out. You don't need it. You don't even need to turn your headlight on. You just come flying through these trails. You can see just like if it were daylight. Really cool. Man, it looks like might be some kind of a den over here. Look at this. I might want to stay out of there. I'm not telling what's living up in that. But anyway, yeah, good times, man. Come whiz banging through here on a four wheeler in the middle of the night. Come off back in here and you you hide out somewhere off of one of these trails. Like I said, you don't need a headlight or nothing. Fun times. Only do that on full moon nights, of course. <laughs> Otherwise. Might be in some trouble running one of these trees. Go off down one of these trails. Come back over this way and what? Got some good firewood laying around out here. Come back here and gather up some of this. Look at this. That's a nice tree. Look at that thing is huge. Wonder how old that is. That might be one of the oldest trees on the property right there. Get off back here to my other pond. <laughs> you guys, you're not gonna believe this. We built this little TP thing here probably like eight years ago kids were still little back then they're the ones that put it all together and that's it's still standing i can't believe it funny they used to get in there and play pretty neat another old tree that i think that one might be dead okay so the over here is where i dug my, oh check it out this is yeah this is my other pond i haven't been back here in a while we got some water in it look at that that's cool I was wondering if it was going to fill up. It's starting to. Got a little ways to go. Really cool though. See if we can get down here without breaking my leg. Nobody knows I'm back here. <laughs> I probably should have said something to somebody before I came off back here. But anyway, you kind of get an idea how deep it'll be once it starts to fill up a little bit. But yeah, pretty cool. Damn tree branches everywhere. There's more. More deer print. I don't know if you can see them or not on there. Yeah, I took that bulldozer, man. And not, this was solid trees. All of this, solid trees. They were way too close together. You couldn't do anything with it. So I cleared them all out and, of course, left plenty of them still around. This is so nice in the evening when that sun starts to go down. In the summertime, not so much now. All the leaves are gone. But um, summertime is great. This all starts to get really shady back here. We'll come off back here some more. Thought about digging me another pond back in this area here. You know, got the space. Maybe we just add it to this pond. Just kind of dig it on out further this way. Be kind of cool just have this whole area full of water this area actually fills up with water all on its own it just doesn't stay it drains off and just dig it down a little deeper and 
for the whole water. A little swimming hole or something, you know. Maybe in the future, after it fills up. But for now, it makes a nice little spot for all the deer and everything to get water. We got another road heads off in this direction. I think I'm gonna go back this way over here. Yeah, this whole area is kind of low. And when we get really, really heavy rain, it'll fill up about waist deep with water. So it's kind of fun walking around back here in the middle of summer when this all fills up. I've always just wanted to uh, dig it down a little deeper, kind of make it more usable pond. Maybe you can throw a jet ski or something in it. It'd be kind of fun. There's another big old tree here. I think it's a toss up between this and that other one. These are two, the two granddaddy trees of the property, I guess. They're huge. Yeah, unfortunately I can't drive through here right now until I get all these branches picked up. So we'll have to cruise through here with the trailer or something and load these up. And... There you are, Bernie. There you been? Load these up and get them cut out and burn them. Have ourselves some more fire. Another road coming off back in here. A lot of this just needs to be mowed again. We haven't driven on it for a little while. So it runs off this way, the road. But you can see more limbs down. And then, trying to go this way too. We had this all set up before to run four wheelers and dirt bikes on and man, it was a blast because you could just rip and roar through here, full blast, nothing in the way. All the trails were nice and worn, but that's been a couple years ago. We haven't done that lately. And then with the ice storm, we had that kind of killed that whole deal. So yeah, you can see, I mean, every road, every trail, you're blocked off. There's another road heading off that way and we can't get to it. So anyway, like I said, man, more firewood. All right, we got the campfire going. You know what that means. I'm gonna go ahead and get on out of here. You guys, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. I really appreciate you guys watching the video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Uh, thumbs down if you didn't, I guess. Uh, Leave me a comment. Let me know if you're a new subscriber. I'd like to welcome you here. Uh, but I'm going to get on out of here. It's almost dark. I'm losing daylight. So I'll see you guys on the next one.